everyone. Thank you for joining us for Commonwealth Shakespeare Company's Macbeth Virtual Director's Cut. I'm Bryn Boyce, Associate Artistic Director of CSC, and this is Steve Mailer, our Founding Artistic Director and the Director of this past summer's production of Shakespeare on the Common, Macbeth. So Steve, you have been doing this for a while. This is 27 years. Uh, what I'd love to, to just sort of pick your brain about what is different about what we do at CSC because of our particular space on the Boston Common. For many people, this is their first exposure to live theater or their first exposure to Shakespeare. So we really strive to make the environment welcoming and warm. And, you know, we believe fundamentally that these plays belong to everybody. It is common wealth. And so we, we really want to make everyone feel like they belong in the story somehow. And that, that, that filters in in so many different ways. It's casting choices. It's how we set up the stage, how we work with our front of house team to make the space welcoming and inviting, and how we try to make sure that everything in the storytelling is really clear and focused and uh, discernible to the audience so that, that there's never any sense of, I don't understand. I'm confused. I'm lost. You know, reading Shakespeare is incredibly difficult, but seeing Shakespeare should be very clear and very easy when we're doing our jobs well as, as theater practitioners. And so that's what we strive to do is just remove all of those barriers or barricades that sort of make it hard to kind of get inside of this material. This material is universal. It, it, it has reason, the reason it's been powerful and meaningful for 400 to over 400 years is because he speaks to sort of the essential truths about who we are as people and who we are as civilizations. And so we strive to just tap into that kind of energy and allow that um, impulse to sort of guide our work and, and guide the, the, the actor's work and the director, designer's work, director's work, everyone's work is really focused around sort of revealing these plays in a contemporary context. Great. Well, before we actually greet our first guest, I'd like to mention the creation of the concept for the summer and your work with our scenic designer, Ryu Rakhalshan, to design the container for Macbeth, speaking of barricades. Um, I just love for you to, to, to talk about um, just the, the concept and how that also brings the audience in. Yeah, you know, we like to say it at CSC, we don't do doublet and tights. Um, we really think of these plays as powerful contemporary expressions of, of what our civilization is grappling with and uh, as great writing does. And so for us, the, 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 the impulse is always about how do you find the contemporary and the classical and the classical and the contemporary? In other words, how do you bring Shakespeare forward to us today, but how do we also honor and uh, 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 celebrate um, what's so great about him as a writer. So it's this sort of cross century connection that we're trying to find. So for me, when I think about a Shakespeare play, I'm always thinking about, well, what does this say to me today? Why do this play? What story are we trying to tell? And I think with, with Macbeth in particular, it's a, it's a play about civic discord. It's a, it's a play about a fractured society. It's a play about what happens when personal ambition uh, overtakes civic responsibility and, and loyalty goes out the win window in, in the interest of personal ambition. So that's a very contemporary theme, sadly, uh, and a very cyclical theme. Um, I think with the set in particular, Ryu and I really wanted to find something that spoke to us today that sort of represented that fragmented and fractured world that is the world of Macbeth. We looked at a lot of different visual research as we often do as we're building uh, our, our work. And a lot of the images we were picking up were from, you know, riots in the United States and, um, you know, violence in Ukraine and sort of hot spots all around the globe, both, you know, kind of spanning, you know, the 20th century, 21st century of experiences that, that felt very emotionally rich and contemporary and meaningful to us. Uh, but also had a, you know, kind of a, a connection to this world of this militarism and and violence that Macbeth is embedded in. Well, speaking of that, let's bring in our next guest to talk more about the beginning of this play and how we're drawing the audience in. 
We want to welcome our good friend, Robert Walsh, who we will call Bob because we can't help it, uh, to uh, <laughs> talk with us today about um, the fight direction uh, in this amazing summer production. Um, Bob, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in asking you about um, this first fight that sort of introduces us to Macbeth and this battle. Um, you've said that this is a, a, um, a way to introduce, that we don't usually get to see this fight and it's a way to introduce um, the main character in a way that a lot of productions don't do it. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, first of all, hey, Bryn, hey, Steve, thank you for this invitation. Great to be with you guys again. Yeah, the uh, oftentimes production just assumes this battle and so it gets talked about uh, quite poetically, of course, in the opening scenes. For us, we were also very mindful of the fact that we were looking to really mitigate uh, a lot of gun violence uh, with this production, which as you place, you know, depending on where you place a production, and this had a very contemporary feel in many respects, uh, that, that people are going to ask the question, where are the guns? And so to mitigate that, we decided we would just be using bladed weapons, mostly knives, really. So. Uh, but also to find a, a vocabulary in terms of, you know, close quarter combat that could feel um, a little more imaginative, a little more abstract. And so I was influenced by a couple of uh, TV shows that I've been watching, some great martial arts shows on Netflix. Uh, but it, one in particular that really, I, I was caught by how they developed the characters and, and the characters related and the story progressed through this very uh, imaginative use of movement. That's great. Let's actually, let's, let's watch it. So I love these moments that just grab the audience's attention right out of the gate. It's not every production you see Lady Macbeth in the middle of a conflict, uh, but Joanne was wonderfully uh, adventurous in wanting to be a part of this first scene. Part of what we were trying to establish out of the gate was this sort of blended reality of the production. There's mysticism, there's magic, there's madness, and not everything is what you think it is. The other light motif is tracking how the witches are controlling so many of the events. There's our hero establishing this powerful warrior that we really wanted to set in the audience's mind right out of the gate. But Steve, I'm, I'm also in your debt for casting a huge body of actors with the requisite skills to pull this off in a really uh, glorious way. So um, uh, as always, a, a pleasure and a treat to collaborate with you. You knew as well, Bob. Thank you so much for your great work uh, on this project and others and, and for taking time with us today. Yeah, thanks you guys. Thanks, Bob. Well, that was fun. Bob is always such a delight and he really works with the skills of the actors that he, uh, that he has in, in the cast, the artists he has to play with. Um, speaking of artists and play, let's now chat with two of our cast members from this summer. I want to welcome Joanne Kelly and Farhan Tahir, our Macbeth and Lady Macbeth from this summer's production. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you all after a few minutes. It's good to see you. Um, we, Steve and I have talked a, a lot about the fact that he's had a, a, a long relationship with you, Farhan, um, for many years. You were in our first production of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream back in 1996. So, <laughs> so you guys have known each other for a very long time. But I'd love to just sort of um, ask, how did we, how did we find amazing Joanne? Steve, how did that come about? I know you had a, a conversation with Farhan and, and, and then a conversation with Joanne, but I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so Farhan and I have been talking about you know, working together again for some time. We've gone through some very big ones together, obviously, the uh, Richard III most recently, and then this one. And so much of what we talked about with this piece was the chemistry between Macbeth and Lady Macbeth is sort of vital and essential to the production. And we talked about other iterations we'd seen that didn't quite click, that are the, the M and Lady M didn't quite click, and that the play kind of fell apart because of that. 
So Ferran had worked with Joanne uh, over the years and was really desperate for me to meet her and chat with her. And it was just so clear to me when I first met Jo how perfect she was for the role and how she would create, you know, a unique and distinct Lady M that uh, had never been seen before. And, and I continue to hear this as I talk to people about the production, that um, these two central performances were both so full and rich and compelling. It couldn't have been a better scenario for me. And Ferran and Joanne, I think you have talked, um, I, I think I've heard you talk about how you used to talk about this play when you were on set for other things. Is that true? It's absolutely true. Um, so Joe and I have known each other for almost a decade and a half. So, you know, so, so, this, so with every day, the, the friendship, the relationship enriches, and then it builds trust. Uh, and whenever we had any downtime, whenever we were on set, or when we were at dinner or whatever, uh, invariably, uh, Shakespeare and specifically Macbeth would come up. So when, when this thing came up, I, uh, Steve and I were talking about it. And, and the, the next big question was, which would be with any Macbeth production, is like, if you were playing Macbeth, who's the lady? And then Joe, who I, I have such huge um, respect for and trust with, that this to me seemed like the, 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 best, the best of the best. No, I'm Canadian, so I'm not super familiar with a lot of American companies. I'm still figuring out the landscape very much, but I know that in the, in the I've done a lot of TV and there's very few people that I meet. I'm a bit of a Shakespeare nerd. Um, to put it mildly, um, but there's very few few people that I've met on sets or just in the kind of work that I've been doing that you meet that care about very similar things that that care about Shakespeare in the way that I do. And so when I met Farhan, and I think it was 2009, um, and we started talking about it and the beginning of, of a wonderful friendship centered around that idea. I went to go see him on Broadway in the fall and he mentioned Mackers. And I remember we walked around Fort Greene one day just talking about the play and, and the possibilities at hell and, and certain things that we thought hadn't been explored, which seemed very logical to us. And we were very much on the same page about that. Um, and then when I met Steve, um, we had our meeting and Steve is so lovely and so open. And so um, he was so, he wasn't dogmatic in any way, shape or form. Um, and I, I just felt so excited about exploring this way, this play in a way that the three of us could just like order and see what we could find um, through it. Uh, and I, I think we came up with a pretty special production I'm very, very proud of it. I'm still thrilled. Like months later, I'm still thrilled. <laughs> let's watch. Uh, let's watch a little clip, shall we? Hmm? Oh, good God! Okay. Let's... Oh. Greater than both by the all hail hereafter. <laughs> Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall son that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. 
and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. I'd love to switch gears for just a moment and talk about um, that you both have a background in both film and TV and theater. Um, and just uh, to try to talk about what it's like to be on the Boston Common and the, uh, how do you deal with the scale of the space? <laughs> well, I can go on, but I think it would be interesting to hear Joe because th this was Joe's first introduction to that space. And, and it, it, it does, it brings gifts and it brings challenges. And both of them are beautiful. I think the word Shakespeare rock concert <laughs> are, uh, are pretty, uh, a good summation. I have never experienced anything quite like it. Um, you know, but actually my first, the, the first gig I had was doing Shakespeare uh, in a park and actually in Halifax and Nova Scotia, but nothing like this level. Um, you know, the fact that the show is free, um, the fact that so many people can come be exposed to some, and some, you could hear the gas in the audience audibly. Um, you know, I, there's a moment when I slap her on and I could just, I remember the intake, the collective intake of breath from 8,000 people is is an awesome uh is an awesome energy to feed off and an awesome you know every different every night is different because the audience is different the play morphs every single night i felt the love from the audience the wonder the same love and wonder i have for the material i felt was reflected back and actually some nights i was so overwhelmed i couldn't uh couldn't look up during curtain call because of the outpouring, that much energy coming at you, especially when there are standing ovations and stuff, I couldn't bring myself to look up. It was so much, there are so, especially after COVID, so much gratitude and so much um, love and, and thankfulness for what we're doing. And also the mad scene, it's not to be missed that our production was, you know, delayed one night because of mental health issues and how they're not addressed in this country. And to get to do something like that for the public in a very true sense was such a, such a responsibility, but such a wondrous thing to be a part of. It was really humbling. Amazing. What's special to you about the, the common, Farhan? Everything. I think I think the the very idea of being out on the cop, and you know there were times I think there were there were some nights when we had almost seven to eight thousand people out there, you know, and just from from being a a lover of Shakespeare, uh, to 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 realize the fact that that the eight thousand person was way back to whom to whom we are just dots, and all he or she can hear. Are the words of Shakespeare, you know, reverberating through, through, uh, through the center of Boston, is it, a beautiful thing. That 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 wonder and that humility that that brings to be able to know that there are people out there who have never, who have never heard Shakespeare, who don't know how Macbeth ends, they don't even know what Macbeth is, and yet they're there, and then they're, they're and they're bringing all their energy and their love and everything. To come and support this, so so there's so there's that, and the other hunger. part, of, and exactly, hunger. and their hunger, exactly, you know, to 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 be to be part of this, and I always think I I always say that the audience is the final character in any play, you know, uh, we, we say this all the time when we get off stage, like how is the audience tonight, and we say that because that character comes on and becomes part of the reality, of this. and you have to honor that. And once you honor that, then they are part of, of this of the storytelling. They are also telling the story by their reaction to the story that we are trying to provide to them. 
So on that level, as a person, as a human, as an actor, that's, that's very humbling to see that. On the other hand, to be out there under the heavens and to be able to actually try to pull in this energy that the people and the trees and, and, and the sky and everything is bringing to you is, is a beauty on the distractions that, that, that life is bringing to you, which is how life is, right? I mean, we can, we can do it in a sterile box and it can be great. But to be able to incorporate all and keep it somehow the other part of the story and the world that we are creating together as actors and as audience is a beautiful thing. So there's that. I think on top of that, what CSP does, which I think I want, I have tried to be and would want to be part of it because it's such an important, it is what Shakespeare actually intended. Shakespeare was never intended for elites. Shakespeare was intended for the regular man, the, the man who, who got drunk and threw the bottle uh, on the stage, right? So, and I'm not saying that that's what these people are, but what I'm saying is that that, that accessibility to, to that kind of storytelling and that, that level of emotional up and down for us to all share it together is a beautiful gift. I, unlike Joe, I love to look at the audience when I go out there at the end of it. Because <laughs> we have just gone through this, this war, this marathon together. And to me, it's, it's not just they applauding us, we're all applauding each other that, that we are here. So to me, it's, 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 such a, it's such an energy boost. The minute lights go on and you're out there, everything stops and this, this begins. Well, thank you all so much for sharing this time with us. Um, we are so happy that we got to see you again and you're wonderful this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this play there with all of us. I think, I think it was, it, it, it is one of those things that that'll be one of like the highlights of my, my life as when I'm, I don't want to get modeling, but when I leave this world is going to be one of one of those moments. Yeah. Yeah, I always say being an actor is like trying to keep a candle lit in the wind uh, with all the uncertainty in the profession. And um, this was uh, this is a really great way to keep that candle lit. It was such a emboldening experience and I couldn't have asked for anything more. It was so great to see them. Um, I want to ask one more question, Steve. Um, why is this project, Shakespeare on the Boston Common, so important and why CSC? Yeah, you know, I think looking back on 20 plus almost 30 years of working with CSC, you know, our mission is so clear and pure and vibrant and vital. We, we really strive to bring the community together around great stories and great storytelling. And I think, you know, nothing defines a civilization more than the stories that it tells and how it tells them. And for me, CSC is this sort of great meeting place of, of all of Boston. Uh, we really see such a broad cross-section of our community. I don't really see that at other arts events as much as I do at, at Shakespeare on the Common. And so this vision of democratizing art, of democratizing Shakespeare, of really kind of taking Shakespeare back to the roots where everybody went to see the shows, the shows were written for everyone. Um, that's not what's happened in our country and many countries as ticket prices have become more and more unaffordable and uh, the theater form, art form is seen to be more and more elite. Um, that's sort of the counter trends of Shakespeare. That was not his inspiration, it was not his world. And so we really want to bring that recalibration of who belongs inside of the theaters and who belongs inside of these stories. It, it starts with sharing stories with everybody and making the, 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 the experience of participating in live theater truly, truly accessible. And fun. It's a great, it's, it's a great fun time out there. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Um, that's uh, a beautiful sentiment that I think everybody that has uh, watched uh, Shakespeare on the Common over the years would have to agree with. It really does bring people together. So as we wrap up, folks, please uh, don't forget to follow us at ComShakes on all social media platforms to stay informed about our other uh, upcoming events and programming announcements. And uh, many thanks to all who've joined us. And if you love this and love Shakespeare on the Common, great programming like Macbeth, 
We truly cannot do this without you. So we encourage you to donate any gift that's meaningful to you is deeply treasured and honored by us. We will um, uh, use it to the best of our abilities to tell great stories and to share great stories on the Boston Common and in our fantastic education programs that really foster the next generation of young artists and artisans. So please support us if you can. You can go to comshakes.org slash donate, or you can use the QR code on your screen. Thanks and thanks and ever thanks. Bye.